Welcome to this second video in the best practices for a patrol officer's response to sexual assault series. The National Sexual Assault Kit Initiative Training and Technical Assistance Project, or SACI TTA, has developed this series to provide guidance to law enforcement staff who respond to sexual assaults as the primary patrol officer. The goal of this training is to showcase the seriousness of these crimes and the need to adapt our approach to sexual assault cases and victims. My name is Jordan Satinsky, and I am a lieutenant from the Montgomery County Police Department in Maryland, where I supervise the Special Victims Investigations Division. I am also a member of the SACI Training and Technical Assistance Team. In the first video of this series, we discussed the importance of treating a sexual assault victim with empathy and an open mind. As patrol officers, we need to ensure that we do not re-traumatize our victims with our actions by remaining victim-centered. Resist the urge to interrogate the victim. The goal of your initial interactions with a sexual assault victim is to follow a trauma-informed approach that ensures the victim's safety, obtains pertinent details for your report, and provides the victim with an outlet for support services. A failure to employ trauma-informed interviewing techniques could lead to the victim not receiving necessary services for their health. If the victim declines to go to a rape crisis center or hospital immediately, provide them with contact information for a community-based advocacy center so that they can get the support they need at a later time. This may also help to build trust with law enforcement, which may help the victim decide to report the crime in the future. Let's imagine you are responding to a sexual assault crime. You arrive at the hospital, locate the victim, and you are using a non-confrontational style to question them about the assault. What do you do next? First, Victims need necessary care and services, such as medical care and advocacy, to ensure their physical and emotional health. The emotional and physical turmoil experienced and felt by victims can impact their interactions with the criminal justice system. Therefore, a victim's safety and well-being is as important as his or her voice in the investigation. The number one priority of the sexual assault nurse examiners, or SANES, is the medical care of the victim. Your relationship and interaction with the SANE can impact the victim's experience, and the SANE should help you determine an appropriate time for the initial law enforcement interview while the victim is in the SANE's care. The SACI TTA Toolkit, available at sacitta.org, has a video series to provide additional details on law enforcement officer and SANE roles and responsibilities for sexual assault victims. Once the SANE has ensured critical medical care has been provided, let the victim know that you are there to help them. Tell the victim that you will or already have contacted a victim advocate and ask them if they have any questions. Questions? You may be thinking, as a patrol officer, what exactly can I answer? This is not my area of expertise. You can answer some questions. Answer those about the process, such as what happens next. Give them the information on the victim advocate's role, the hospital's role, and your role. Let the victim know that you are the first part of the process and that you will try to bring all the resources you can to her or him. Now, ask the victim for some basic information, such as where this incident occurred and if the victim knows the suspect. You can also ask the victims to describe what brought them to the hospital. A victim may not want to talk to you, which is fine. At this point, we know that she or he is there for a sexual assault, so our main goal should be to prevent further trauma. We also want to lay a foundation of support to the victim for what can be a lengthy and difficult process. It is important for the victim to focus on healing and have all the resources needed to facilitate healing. It is our obligation to ensure that victim has access to support services to promote recovery, regardless of the outcome of the case. Do not pass judgment if you witness erratic behavior and an inability to provide a detailed account of the sexual assault. As you learned in the first video of this series, this is expected of a sexual assault victim. Provide the victim the time and the opportunity to recall the information as their brain allows. This means when we are questioning, we are not interrogating the victims. Requesting information from a victim must be done in a trauma-informed, understanding, and empathetic manner. Employ open-ended questions such as, what are you able to tell me about what happened? And ask them to take their time when responding. Once you get the basic information, contact your agency's sexual assault investigator to provide the initial report and information you collect to them. Your job is to welcome that victim into the criminal justice system. 
Your job is not to interrogate or attempt to determine the validity of the allegation. Your job is to make that victim as comfortable as possible and provide the detective with as much information as possible. I know this might not align with how you learned to interview and sounds social worker-esque. I totally understand. And as I said in the first video in this series, I was you early in my career before obtaining the experience, training, and education that I have today. I know being open and honest with someone you may believe is lying is really hard, but this is one area of law enforcement where your opinions are absolutely irrelevant. Be supportive of the victim, gather information, and let the SAU investigator take it from there. Your job is to make sure the victim is provided a safe environment that could allow for a road to recovery that could positively impact their life. Thank you.